Hello students. In this video, we are going to learn about one bit shift register. In previous video, we saw about D flip flop. Here, we'll be connecting D flip flop with our register. So we'll see what actually is shift register first. So what are shift registers? What are registers actually? Registers are certain device, I can say, for your understanding purpose, right? Registers are used for data storage, okay? So now we are going to learn about shift register first. So shift register is a type of register. Based on the application of register, I am classifying my registers as shift register. Based on the inputs and outputs, the registers are divided into serial input, serial output, serial input, parallel output, parallel input, serial output, parallel input, parallel output. Could have studied CISO, SIPO, PISO, PIPO. Now, we are going to learn based on the application, what type of application this register is going to use. So here, in this class, we'll be learning about shift register. So the registers are usually going to perform shift operation. So as I said earlier, registers are used for data storage. So same way, shift registers are also going to be used for storing your data. Because we have so many designs in our VLSA circuits, after processing all these designs, where we will be storing the data, we need certain registers. And now, out of that, one of the registers is shift register. So here we are using it for storing our data and also for the movement of the data. Movement of the data means we are going to shift your bits towards your right side or towards your left side. Based on that, your shift register will again be classified as shift left mode and shift right mode. We're not going much into that, but as of now, it is used for storing your data as well as for the movement of data, right? The shift registers are commonly used inside your calculators or computers. For what? Calculators will be giving inputs for adding data, right? So what is that to store the data? There's two binary numbers before they are added together. Okay, now we are having two binary numbers that has to be added. So these can be used for storing such type of data before they have been added together, right? And also I said that for the movement of data, how we convert this data from either the serial to par parallel manner or from parallel to serial format. These are the applications of your shift register where it is being used. So I said that it has been used in calculators or computers for storing your data as well as for the movements of data, right? Next, the shift registers or can be made just by using a D type of flip-flop. They are the simple shift registers, okay? A simple shift register can be made by using, just by using a D flip-flop. That's why I said now, earlier in this video, in the last video, we learned about D flip-flop and I'm connecting your D flip-flop towards your shift register. How? We are going to construct a shift register just by using D flip-flop. What is a D flip-flop? Your output of the flip-flop will be changing based on the D input, right? Output will be based on the D input. When your clock signal is enabled, whatever data I'm giving in my input will be at the output. If I'm giving the D is equal to one, when my clock is enabled, my output is also be equal to one. If my D input is zero, my output will also be equal to zero, right? That is what a D flip-flop is. Now I'm going to use this D flip-flop for constructing a shift register. In our course, we have one bit shift register. Usually for storing each data bit, we need a single flip-flop, one flip-flop for each data bit. Now, what type of uh, register we are going to construct? One bit shift register. So how many flip-flops do we need? Of course, we need one flip-flop for each data bit. And I said that D flip-flop is nothing but output from each flip-flop will be connected to the input of the flip-flop at its right. 
usually like uh, if suppose it is two two bit shift register what has to be done two flip flops will be connected output of the first flip flop will be connected to the d data input of the next flip flop right so the shift registers what they do they hold the data in their memory which is moved or shifted to the required position on each clock cycle so whenever a clock pulse is given the shift register that was holding the data will be moving or shifting to their required position it will be moving to the one bit shift will be given whenever a clock pulse is given when your clock pulse comes the bit that data that has been stored will be moving to one bit right this is the gist of your shift register now one bit shift register so i told that the shift registers are nothing for shifting your data on each clock pulse we can construct the shift register by using a flip flop so now our question is one bit shift register so how many flip flop do we need one flip flop is used so which type of flip flop we are using the simple type of flip flop is d flip flop so what is the d flip flop it will be tracking the input it will be making the transitions at output based on your input right is it clear now d stands for data people call d as uh, delayed flip flop also but for easy understanding you can have that d stands for data whatever data is in the input it will be in the output so this flip flop will be storing the value that is on the data line so what is the value that will be stored in your register what is the value that will be stored in the register the data that is on the input line will be stored in the flip flop or your register so you can think something is being stored consider our brain something is stored it is a memory we call it as a memory in the same way it can be thought of as a basic memory cell because the input is being stored or captured or latched inside your flip flop so d flip flop how can we make by using an sr flip flop in the previous video we saw if an sr flip flop has come there will be a condition when both this inputs are equal to 1 but when both inputs become equal to 1 there will be a output q and q bar will not be complement to each other so such type of conditions will come in your sr flip flop so to avoid that what we did we just connected the set and reset pins or the inputs through an inverter thereby it changes into a d flip flop a simple sr flip flop with the inputs inverted will give a d flip flop right with all this we shall move on to our design style using this d flip flop what is it a one bit shift register we are going to construct so for one bit shift register we need one flip flop what flip flop we are using we are using a d flip flop see this diagram what i have drawn the gate level representation in the previous video we have seen two d flip flops two d latches were connected and the clock was inverted if you didn't watch it just please go on to the previous video watch that video there i have mentioned it clearly two d latches have been connected with a clock inverter right that was master slave d flip flop now i am just using a normal d flip flop i am not going for a master slave i am not having two different latches i am using just a single d flip flop right by using nand gate i have mentioned but here i have used an inverter so if a case of inverter is there you can just equal symbol i have given so an inverter can be made equal into an nand gate by connecting both the inputs tied together right this is the gate level representation that we have seen so now how many nand gates are there there are four nand gates nand 1 2 3 and 4 have marked the intermediate output that is coming from the nand 1 and acting as an input for the nand 2 as the letter a and b specifies the output of nand 3 and the input of nand 4 is it clear so now for the nand 1 what is the thing is i am so far we just saw a d flip flop that will be acting as a one bit shift register clock is coming d will be at the output so it is storing your data simple now we are going to design this circuit or this one bit shift register by using all different styles what is it all different styles of course static cmos style dynamic style pseudo nmos style domino logic np cmos right so in all these five the thing that you want to know 
is static CMOS style. Once you know static CMOS style, you just make modifications and you can easily draw other styles also. So I'll be just showing you static CMOS style. In our previous video, I have shown you all different styles. Using this model, you can just manipulate or you can do for yourself all the other styles. So here I will be just explaining you about static CMOS style. So how many NAND gates are there? Four NAND gates, right? So what is the input for NAND gate one? D as well as clock. So D and clock acting as the input. And what is the output? A is the output. What is the input of NAND two? A and Q bar. What is the output? Q, NAND three. What is the input? clock and D bar and what is the output B NAND 4 what is the input Q and Q and B yes and output is Q bar right so just draw, write on seeing the diagram if suppose if you know the diagram just draw the diagram draw the static CMOS because usually you will be asked in examination draw the uh, D flip flop with static CMOS, draw a one bit shift register using static CMOS or any other logic style. Better go for static CMOS because it is so easy, right? I've just shown you the NAND gate one. What is the D input and clock is given to the NAND and A is the output. Is it okay? See, D input and clock is being given to NAND one as an input and your output is A. See here. We have seen NAND gate implementation already. So what are the two inputs of NAND gate? D and clock. So in pull down network, if it is an AND, and operation, you'll be using series connection, series connection of transistor D and clock, and the parallel connection in your pull up network, D and clock in parallel, and then it is connected together and output is A. And again, what is the second NAND gate? Second NAND gate input is A and Q bar, and the output is Q. Again, this is again another NAND gate. So this NAND gate has been drawn. And for the third NAND gate, I have again drawn here. And for the fourth NAND gate. Now, wherever A is there, just connect all the A's together. Connect all Q bars together. Connect all Q together. And connect all B together. And connect all clocks together. Right? So this is a static CMOS design. What about dynamic CMOS? Just have a simple pull down network you just remove the pull up network have a pull down network and add two clocks what about pseudo nmos network remove the pull up network use a single pmos with ground with gate grounded right so that will complete your all the design styles so a uh, question that comes you just go for a static cmos style because it is much more simpler when you know how to connect an and gate or how to connect or make a nor gate so this is all about one bit shift register. So in next video, we'll see about the, some numericals. Thank you.